Hello brewers. I get fairly regular questions about uh, water treatment and water management and I have been promising for a while to uh, do a video about water management and my approach to it. So I um, finally got on the round to it. I'm going to do it in three parts. So first of all I'll talk about why water management is important and what we're trying to achieve. Then second, I will uh, go through the practicalities of working out your water adjustment and what you're trying to achieve for different water profiles. And I'll be using brew and water to do that, using some screenshots. And that's just the software that I use. There's other software available. They all work in a very similar way. And then third, I will um, go through the practicalities of making a water adjustment and building a water profile on an actual brew day and that hopefully should cover all the things that people need to know to get started. Before we get started, uh, a couple of caveats first. Um, I'm not a chemist, it's not my job. I was able to do a few modules on chemistry at university level as part of a different science degree. So. I'm familiar with the basic concepts and the nomenclature, etc. So that allowed me to um, get up to speed reasonably quickly on, on water treatment. But there are some, uh, I don't claim to be an expert, you know, this is just my pragmatic approach that I'll take you through. And there are some experts out there uh, on the internet. So um, get out there and watch other YouTube materials as well. Second caveat is that uh, water treatment is going to probably give that last 5% of polish to your beers. There are things in your basic workflow that are going to have a bigger impact on the quality of your beer than water treatment unless you're in a really extreme water situation. So for example, um, controlled fermentation temperatures I think will give you a bigger step change in the quality of your beer than uh, water treatment. So unless you've got those basic things nailed down, especially temperature control, then you should go looking there first. Now when you're brewing good beer, or you know, good consistent beer, that's the time to look at water treatment for that last 5% uh, of polish. Okay, so those caveats are uh, outstanding. Let's get started then. Okay, so what are, we, uh, what are we trying to achieve with water management? Well, as I see it, there are two things that we are trying to achieve. The first is to manage pH, principally of the mash, but uh, really manage the pH of the whole production cycle from the um, tap water or source water through the mash right through to the finished product. Uh, and the second thing that we are trying to achieve with water management is to get to a water profile in the sense of the mineral content of the water which is sympathetic to the style of beer that we are trying to brew. So as you'll see when we get into it, the type of water profile you would build for a beer that you want to be quite malt forward and smooth and soft will be different to the water profile you will build for a beer that you want to be drier, uh, hoppier, sharper, a bit more astringent. Um, so we'll take it in those two parts. We'll deal with um, pH first and then we'll talk, but mainly when I'm in brewing water, we'll talk about um, matching your water profile to the style of beer that you are uh, trying to produce. So uh, let's start with uh, pH management. Okay, I'm gonna do it the old school way with good old pen and paper. So let's begin by checking that we all know what pH is and we're all talking about the same thing. So pH is a measure of how acid or alkaline uh, something is, your, your water or your wort. It's measured on a scale from 1 to 14. I've just got a short scale here because that's what we're interested in. Where 1 is uh, the most acid end of the scale and 14 is the most alkaline end of the scale. Remember that it that's the direction it goes in. So if people talk about um, the pH being too high, they mean that it's too alkaline. If people talk about increasing the acidity of something, the pH number will get smaller. That's the direction that the, that the scale goes in. Uh, now there's one geeky, geeky thing, slightly geeky thing to remember about the pH scale, I think. And that is that it's a logarithmic scale. So if you go from down from one unit of pH to another, 
the underlying chemistry is changing by 10 to the power 1 which is 10 times so the underlying chemistry is changing of acidity and alkalinity is changing 10 times when you go down or up one pH scale. If your pH changes by two, the underlying chemistry is going to change by 10 to the power two, i.e. a hundred times. And if your pH changes by a factor of three or three points, the underlying chemistry is going to change by a factor of 10 to the three, which is a thousand times. And it's a bit geeky and you can forget that, but the reason that I just explained that is what that means is relatively small changes of the number, the pH value, can represent quite significant changes in the underlying chemistry, which was why you will see that we seem to obsess about relatively small changes in pH. Relatively small changes in pH can make a really big difference to what's going on in your uh, chemistry of your brewing. Okay, the midpoint on the uh, pH scale is 7 and that's where you, something's neither acid nor alkaline, it's neutral. Uh, and you will find that the vast majority of drinkable tap water has a pH of between 6.5 and 8.5. And um, as you'll see when we get further into it, the pH is just one factor to consider and it's actually not the key factor to consider in your tap water. But it's, uh, it's something that you certainly will want to know when you get into your water treatment. Now when it comes to your mash, you want your mash to have a pH of between 5.2 and 5.6 with this, this little range here. That's a really restricted range as you can see. Only 0.4 difference from bottom to top. And remember the, uh, the nature of the pH scale means that although that's a small range, you know, a significant amount of chemistry change is going on in between the ranges of those two numbers. And so you want your mash down here, you're already on a hiding to nothing, and your tap water is starting up here. And as, well, as I said earlier, it's not just the pH of your tap water that's going to be influential on your mash either. So why do we want the mash pH between 5.2 and 5.6? Well, the thing to remember, I think, is that the mash pH, the mashing process, is the beginning of the creation of your beer. So it's not just about what's going on in the mash. The mash pH begins to set the tone for the rest of your beer. And most people seem to assume that the mash pH is all about um, efficiency of the conversion, you know, and the enzymes being happy in that range. And whilst that is the range that uh, enzymes are happy to be in, that's not the major factor really on your mash. Efficiency, things like the temperature, the length of your mash, the consistency are likely to have a much greater impact than that. But there are all sorts of other uh, chemical reactions going on in your mash, apart from the uh, conversion of sugar, uh, conversion of um, starches into sugar. Uh, and it's those reactions that um, differ according to the pH that you're at. So your mash pH can actually um, set the tone, the pH of your beer um, will influence not just the efficiency of your mash but the clarity, the flavour, you know, some of the perception of the beer. So uh, it's not just about the mash pH but it's the, we do aim to start with a good uh, pH range for our mash. Okay, getting into, the, getting into the mash then. If you take uh, pale malt and you mash it into distilled water, so there are no minerals or anything else in there to interfere with anything, it settles out at a pH of somewhere around 5.8, that, that I've marked on there. So you can see that given that that distilled water will have been pH 7, uh, being distilled, um, the malt itself has shifted the pH down uh, and acidified the mash. Uh, and the reason that happens is because of chemical reactions in the, in the mash uh, kicked off by the contents of the malt itself, particularly phosphates, which move that pH down uh, in the acidic direction. As you can see, it hasn't quite got into the ideal range that we want it to get into, but um, it started that journey on its own. But remember that this is 
distilled water uh, that the pale malt has gone into. If I take pale malt and mash it into my tap water rather than distilled water, then I've never done it, but according to uh, my brewing water calculations, I will end up with a mash with a pH of 6.2. So if I mashed into distilled water, I'll have a pH of 5.8. If I mashed with tap water, I'm going to get my tap water. I'm going to get a pH of 6.2, which is well away from the 5.2 to 5.6 that we are trying to uh, achieve. So why is that? You know, distilled water is at pH 7. My tap water actually is around pH 7, pH 7.5 I think the last time I measured it. So why is that? Why am I not getting down to that degree of acidification uh, that, I, that I would do with distilled water? Well the answer is that my tap water has got, like most tap water, various dissolved minerals uh, and ions in it which affect the reaction in the mash. And my tap water in particular it has quite a high degree of what's called total alkalinity. And when we talk about uh, total alkalinity, we're not talking about how alkaline the water is in terms of its pH measurements. So total alkalinity and pH are not the same thing. The total alkalinity of your water for brewing purposes is its tendency to hold your mash uh, in a more alkaline position. So the technical term is buffering. So the tendency of the water to buffer those reactions and prevent this acidification happening. And the extent to which that happens will, de will depend on the total alkalinity of your water. Total alkalinity most commonly is reported in parts per million of uh, calcium carbonate. It's nothing to do with calcium carbonate in the water, that's just the way it's measured. It's actually down to the presence um, of bicarbonate and carbonate ions uh, in your water. My water has a uh, total alkalinity of 161 parts per million uh, of calcium carbonate and that's what's accounting for the fact that I would end up with a pH of 6.2 if I just mashed pale malt straight into my tap water. The total alkalinity as I've shown here is pulling up your mash or holding your mash back up in an alkaline range where you don't want it to be. On the other hand, just like pale malt itself can begin to acidify your mash, coloured malts have an even greater impact on the pH of your mash and tend to acidify your mash. So uh, crystal malts, brown malts, uh, black patent malts will all tend to uh, have uh, the uh, effect of decreasing the pH of your mash, making it more acidic. Um, so what that all comes down to is when you are thinking about trying to manage the pH of your mash and land it in the range that you want it, you need to know about the water going in this side, your tap water or whatever water you're using, and in particular what the total alkalinity of that water is, but also what other minerals there are in the water. And you need to know about your recipe, how much pale malt have you got in there, how much coloured malts and which coloured malts are they. And what will happen when you mash in is this tug of war will happen between the malt bill trying to acidify your mash, the any total alkalinity in your water trying to hold that acidification back and eventually it will settle out somewhere and you want it to settle out in this range. And if you're lucky, depending on your malt bill and what your water's like, you'll land there uh, purely by the basis of the recipe. But if you don't land there, then you're gonna have to make some adjustments to your mash chemistry in order to land your mash uh, in the correct pH range. So we'll talk about that now. So how do you know where your mash pH is going to end up? Well, that's where the software comes in. You can do it longhand if you're clever enough, you know, look it all up in books. Um, this is the reference book, uh, as you can see, my well-thumbed copy, Water, by John Palmer and Colin Kaminsky. Um, I'm not clever enough to do that, I use software to do it. You tell your software what your tap water profile is, you tell it the recipe, so you have to change that each mash. 
and it will estimate where that tug of war is going to finish uh, and what your mash pH is likely to be. So what do you do if your mash pH isn't where you need it to be? Well, you've got a number of options. So if your mash pH is not going to end up where you need it, what can you do about it? Well, you're going to adjust your uh, water chemistry, basically. If you need to de decrease your pH, make it more acidic, then one obvious thing you can do is add acids. Uh, the com most commonly used ones are lactic acid, phosphoric acid, or some mineral acids. Um, Chances are you'll also be adding some minerals of some sort to your water anyway to tone the water into the type of beer that you are brewing. Uh, very commonly gypsum is added which is calcium sulphate, calcium chloride is added and both of these particular minerals will tend to decrease the pH as well principally because of the calcium that's in them uh, and so there's a good chance that uh, you will be decreasing your pH through your mineral additions anyway it's possible that your pH will end up too low, particularly if you are brewing a very dark beer like a stout and your water is not very minerally, so you're getting a lot of acidification happening, in which case you might need to increase your pH, and in that case you're going to be adding alkaline substances such as sodium bicarbonate, which is ordinary baking soda. There are stronger alkalines like sodium hydroxide as well, but these are quite potent chemicals and personally I wouldn't use them when you can use something as safe and easily obtainable as sodium bicarbonate. So to summarise then I'm trying to give you a quick summary on one piece of paper, although it be quite a big piece of paper. What you've got is your starting water with its mineral content and a certain degree of total alkalinity in there which will tend to buff your mash and hold it in an alkaline position. You've got your grain bill going in. Uh, and grains will tend to acidify your mash, particularly the, the darker grains. There'll be a reaction between these two and they'll eventually settle out to an equilibrium. If that's in your mash range of 5.2 to 5.6, all, all is good. If not, then you're going to have to adjust your water chemistry. Exactly what you add and how much you add is uh, what you use the software for and we'll get into that in video two. Okay, so that's all for now.